lecture outline five, compounds and nomenclature. And we'll start this lecture outline with a joke, a chemistry joke about chemistry formulas, if you will. A man walks into a bar, says, I'd like a glass of H2O. Bartender says, here you go. Person sitting next to him says, I'd like to have a glass of H2O2. Bartender says, okay, gives him a glass. Guy drinks it and he dies. That is a terrible chemistry joke. I mean, <laughs> anyway, but it does make the point that there is a huge difference between H2O and H2O2. H2O is water. It is the thing that gives life and allows life to live and grow. H2O2, so uh, we have water. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. Used to bleach hair, to... Um, as an antiseptic uh, for uh, wounds or uh, small wounds, I guess, as an oxidizer. Um, and it will uh, quite literally oxidize you from the inside out. Please do not drink hydrogen peroxide. Um, huge difference. And every single formula is telling you a lot of information that we are going to start uncovering in this course. So H2O and H2O2, uh, these are two compounds that we like to call covalent compounds. Um, and they're also called uh, molecular compounds. Because they are the actual molecules of chemistry. Um, now, if we were to look at something else, and let's say, um, so uh, NaOH. So NaOH, uh, as we talked about in the last lecture outline, this is, uh, uh, well, we didn't do nomenclature. This is sodium hydroxide, but this is, N, uh, this has the Na plus ion in it, and it is an ionic compound. And um, so much of general chemistry relies on you being able to tell the difference between a, an ionic compound and a covalent or molecular compound. Now, uh, it gets a little more complicated too, uh, but we're gonna talk through all of it. So these are what are called monatomic ions. And this is what's called, oh, uh, sodium is also a monatomic ion. Uh, and hydroxide, OH minus, is a polyatomic ion. And uh, anyway, we're going to go into all of these types of ions. We're going to go into naming all these compounds. And the huge emphasis here is going to be uh, on this lecture outline on nomenclature, on how to name things. And also we're going to talk a lot about how to uh, differentiate covalent and ionic compounds. Now we're going to talk about three types of formulas. Those are going to be the molecular formula. And the molecular formula lists the actual number of each type of atom. Um, and the abbreviation we're going to use for molecular formula is going to be capital MF. And we'll do the same example uh, through this 
Um, but the example that for the molecular formula is going to be C6H14. You can see there are 14 hydrogens and six carbons, and that's the molecular formula. Empirical formula, well, that's going to have, be capital E, capital F. The empirical formula is the formula with the smallest whole number ratio of atoms possible. And for example, if C6H14 was the molecular formula, then the uh, meant to write an EX there, but empirical. So the empirical formula EF would be the smallest whole number ratio. We can take each of these numbers and uh, divide by two, and if we do that, we get C3H7. That is the empirical formula. There's no smaller whole number ratio that will work. And the structural formula is going to show some structure. But no bonds. And its abbreviation is going to be capital SF. And uh, for example, this will tell a right example. Example, so C6H14 could be a structural formula, would be uh, CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. And the structural formula tells you that this carbon is attached to the atoms that are after it, and the next carbon, so that's a CH3 group right there, then there's a CH2, then another CH2, then another CH2, and, and we don't have, have to know how to do this yet. This is just an example of some of the information you're going to be able to get from the structural formula, the molecular formula, and the empirical formula. So let's see, one, two, three, four, one more CH2, and then a CH3. And so what you can see is that the structural formula here has the most information the molecular formula has the next most information, and the empirical formula has the least information um, as far as giving you information about the compounds. And as such, there is more than one molecular formula that can have the same empirical formula. And so C2H2, C6H6, and C12H12 these are the molecular formulas. The empirical formula for each of these is just C1H1 or CH. Also CH because we can divide both of these by 6 and also CH here. And I'll draw you a couple of these structures anyway C2, the, the, to prove to you that these are actual compounds. So C2H2 Oh, that's a bond there, that's a line. So this one has a triple bond between the two carbons. Again, we don't have to know this yet, but I'm showing it to you so for future information. And that's C2H2. C6H6, uh, at least the most common example I can think of is benzene. And benzene is a six-member carbon ring with H's around it. And it gets essentially the same level of complication for this one as well. Uh, but we'll leave, the, so you don't need to do that one. 
So let's find the lookup. So, and uh, for the homework, so CH can only be an empirical formula. All the other ones can be empirical formula or uh, molecular formula that you'll see there. But CH is the only one that can only be any F. There is no molecule with the formula CH. And you'll see what I talk about, what I'm talking about when you get to the homework. Um, anyway, but e empirical formula is the, it gives you the least information, is the most general. And so it's the least useful oftentimes. But sometimes we figure out the empirical formula is part of solving a problem. Now, more than one structural formula can have the same molecular formula. So, for example, C2H6O2, that's going to be our molecular formula this time. And I'm going to show you that there's more than one structural formula. Uh, there we go. So one of them would be uh, CH3COCH2. Two O H. I think I've got that right. Six hydrogens, three, three carbons. Uh oh, what happened there? Yeah. Uh oh. Let me try again. C H three, C O H, O H. And that would be our C H three group. Our C with an O H. Ah, I should, so you can see there's more information here. So this is going to be CH3, CH, OH, OH. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, two O's, two H's, two C's, I mean. That's the Lewis structure down here. And I'm sorry, but I have to draw all my electrons on my Lewis structure. You'll see why eventually. And this is the representation of it in the structural formula. And there's another one, which I'm hesitant to try now, but it's HO, CH2, CH2. Ah, that's the easy one. There's HO, C, C, O, H. And again, I apologize for that mistake there, but you can see that there are two possibilities here, at least. I might think uh, there are the only two for the same molecular formula. So structural formulas and Lewis structures give you the most information, then molecular formulas, then empirical formulas.